Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. And if you're new here, well that's exactly what I do do. Now today we're looking at an audio recorder. Now I use this a great deal in the studio. I use it for recording backup audio uh, when I'm doing my videos. I use it for you know mastering as well. So it's a very versatile piece of kit. And what we're looking at is the Tascam Porter Studio X8 that we have here. The reason why I purchased the X8 over and above, you know, the Zoom competitor, or, you know, such as the Zoom H6 or the H8, is one thing. This has got 32 bit floating audio. Now, that means really nothing to me apart from the fact that you don't have to be too critical about how you set your audio levels because it's got a really, really wide dynamic range. So, if your levels are a little bit low, you can boost them without increasing the hiss, and that's fantastic. Likewise, if your levels are a bit high, you will normally get distortion, or you normally get popping and all that kind of thing. You don't with this. If your levels are set a bit high, bring the levels down and it doesn't distort. So fantastic flexibility there. And that's great for me because I don't have to be too critical when I'm setting the kit up about getting the audio levels absolutely spot on, as I do when I'm using my Sennheiser MKE 600 going into me Tascam Mixcast 4, which it is at the moment, then normally I have to make sure levels are set absolutely spot on, or near enough spot on, uh, to be able to get a good reproduction when I actually edit the video. Sometimes they're a bit high and I can bring them down, sometimes they're a bit low and I have to boost them. Now I'm looking at my Atomos recorder here that is uh, feeding the signal from the Tascam Mixcast 4, that's going into my Canon R10, and the levels look about right, maybe a bit low. So. If I use that audio, I will have to, you know, increase the levels a bit. Now, if I was using the Tascam X8, I wouldn't have to worry about that audio quality because the X8 would produce fantastic audio quality. Now, this is touchscreen, and it's quite a large uh, touchscreen, so um, it's, it's great from that point of view. It's a good quality touchscreen. Some reviewers have said the, the screen is a bit weak and a bit grey and not such good quality. I don't find that an issue. It's an audio recorder. I'm not monitoring video quality. I'm not monitoring uh, quality of still images on here, so I'm not too worried about the, the screen quality. I absolutely find it fine. So it's completely touchscreen. Now, there's a a whole range of features that this particular recorder has built in and I'm not going to go through all its features and functions in this video because there's far too many to you know to go through all of them but you've got everything from uh, there's a podcasting section there's a music production section um, there's your field recording if you want to do field recording that's gone into the music section uh, so you can set that up if you are you know a musician uh, it's got um, uh, voiceover uh, section um, uh, uh, field recording if you you know a video producer and you do want to use the field recording settings that's got the field recorder settings there um, I tend not to use that I use it in uh, M which I would imagine stands for manual um, I use M all the time and when you're in, in M there's three master tabs at the bottom, bottom of the screen for setting up your audio. So you've got your mixer, which is what I would use all the time, because uh, then I can adjust the levels very easily, very quickly. And at the top, you've got your master levels there. It shows you what the master recording level is. But as I say, because it's set to 32-bit, you don't have to set it to 32-bit, I have. You don't have to be too critical where that slider is in relation to how good the audio is going to be. So you just move that slider up and down uh, so you you know you can set that up beautifully. And that's with all the channels. Um, you've got your other settings in here. If you go to home, it just shows a much bigger display. So you can actually see that um, a lot clearer, which is great. And then you've got your input settings. Uh, again, where you can adjust your gain control and you can adjust everything to do with that particular channel. So it's great. Um, there's a mic, there's a little mic icon. If you touch the mic icon, that takes you into the settings for each individual channel to do with that microphone or that input, which is great. So you can set your phantom power. It's got phantom power for each individual channel. So you haven't got to set it uh, for all the channels. It is independent, which is great. Um, 
Now, the actual connections, on the side it's got uh, four XLR inputs or TRS inputs. So you can either use quarter inch jack uh, TRS cables uh, if you're plugging in something like uh, an amp or something well not an amp but you know a keyboard uh, guitar whatever because you can set the levels for that um, or you can use the XLR if you're plugging in a microphone so it's got XLR input on there so you've got two uh, XLR stroke TRS inputs on that side and they're lockable as well so when you put the mic in it locks so you've got no fear of a mic you know falling out which is really really good um, so very secure and then you've got two uh, TRS microphone inputs on that side stroke XLR inputs uh, you've also got uh, all the external audio in on the side there and an output we can feed out to your camera if you want to and that's got a separate level control for feeding that out to your camera so that is awesome um, uh, there's your level control there uh, also headphone control as well now on the front you've got uh, a master dial for setting your record level i tend not to use that because i use the touch screen but you don't need to use a touch screen if you're in a different menu you can just use this master dial and that'll adjust your audio levels that's really nifty and just a simple stop and record button on the top there and you know your uh, playback controls on the front there as well on that side uh, not a lot going on on that side you've got your uh, on off switch and it goes to a hold button as well if you switch it to hold then you can see there if i try to touch anything nothing will happen uh, so you can't accidentally knock your controls that's ideal if you're out in the field you're doing some audio recording you don't want to uh, knock any of the buttons put it into the hold position and then you've got your sd card compartment micro sd bit of a pain but you know not a big deal uh, but uh, that micro sd slot goes in there which is great there it is and the sd card just slots inside there and then at the bottom there you've got your usb-c port uh, that's for feeding to your computer uh, if you want to use it as a usb interface it's also used for power delivery so i normally when i'm using it in the studio here rather than run it off double a batteries i'll use the power delivery of the usb-c port you know and that works a treat now this blue flashing light at the bottom there is your connection for bluetooth now i highly recommend that you get the bluetooth adapter what annoyed me actually is that it is an optional extra you have to pay for that separately it's only 35 40 quid something like that but it's a bit annoying but you have to buy that separately as an optional extra but what that enables you to do is brilliant and i use it all the time i would highly recommend anyone who does buy the tascam x8 invest the extra 35 40 quid in the bluetooth adapter because that enables you then to use your ipad your samsung uh, whatever device you want to use let me just uh unlock it so, and you connect it to your ipad and uh it's really actually very efficient connection you don't have to go through pairing or anything like that and you can see that's connected now and that's in the mixer mode so you can adjust all your settings uh, from here and that is literally all your settings because it mimics uh it's difficult to show you here actually because it mimics what you see on the actual screen of the x8 so you can see there where are we where are we you can see there that both are coming up now so it's just mimicking exactly what you see on the x8 so as i move this that will change on the x8 so if i go into field recording that will go into field recording on the x8 um, and a great thing with that a you can set this up at a distance from where you are uh, and monitor it using your ipad or you can use the ipad because it's got a bigger screen it's much easier to adjust audio levels on a bigger screen and see what you're doing than it is actually on the x8 so um i would actually use this instead of using uh, the actual um, x8 also you can use it in portrait mode and that's even bigger so 
Um, that's what I always use. I use it in portrait mode because I can get to these dials nice and easily and that will adjust it on the X8. Um, you can't monitor the audio using your iPad. Uh, for some reason, the Bluetooth signal doesn't transmit the audio, but it's a visual adjustment as opposed to audibly hearing the adjustments. So that's a slight disappointment, but um, I guess that's you know the way the, the technology is just at this moment in time. It features multi-track recording up to eight tracks at a time. That's not a feature that I will use because I'm not a musician. I don't do multi-track recording. I basically would feed in possibly um, four microphones at the most. I usually feed in two microphones. One such as my MKE 600 and then maybe a wireless microphone and then feed that output to the camera. So yeah, I don't use a multi-track feature, but yeah, the X8 does feature multi-track recording. Obviously, you can monitor your audio with the X8. has got a headphone jack on the side uh, at the bottom there, so no problem with monitoring audio using the X8 recorder. It does come with these two microphones that I've got on the top here, hence the reason you see the audio levels moving, so um, that is useful. Now, you can have it set up for AB pattern or XY pattern. So I've got it set to the AB pattern because it's spreading the signal outwards. So obviously, if I'm doing an interview, I could have it actually on the table like that and it would pick up my voice but it would also pick up the voice on the person on the other side of the table so very useful from that point of view or you can set it up as an xy sort of stereotype pattern where the microphones are pointing inwards all you do is just un uh, all you do is just unclip them let's do it that way you just unclip the microphone that will come out and then you put it in there we have to swap them over because there's a little lug in the microphone that fits into the lug on the actual uh, recorder so you have to swap the microphones over but yeah you can uh, swap them either way i'm not terribly impressed with the build quality of these microphones i don't think they're as good as the zoom ones um but uh, you know it is what it is you can also plug any microphones into these 3.5 mil jacks it's not just these microphones any microphone that has a 3.5 mil jack connection will go into this connection here um, i tend to plug my wireless microphone straight into the top here rather than using adapters and plugging them in that way into the xlr port it does have a built-in metronome uh, you can see there again on the launch pad there's a metronome these are features that i would never use um, i don't do tuning i don't play the piano so i would never need to use a metronome but i don't even know how it works it is there should you ever need the use of a metronome I use it in M mode all the time because it's got so much flexibility over the six inputs. So you can set your audio level separately for you know all your different inputs. You can set your levels for your two microphones on the top there, um, your phantom power for the XLR inputs. Obviously, phantom power only works on the XLR inputs. It doesn't work on these two microphones on the top here. Um, but uh, yeah, a very useful, very flexible, audio recorder and very compact and particularly useful with the bluetooth um, adapter that's in there flashing blue there so yeah i'd highly recommend the tascam x8 if you're into audio production video production um, and you want a device where you don't have to be too critical on how you set your audio levels you can do that in post-production without worrying about losing sound quality so there we go that's the tascam x8 i will leave a link in the description where you can purchase the x8 from it's at a really good price so you know great value for money so there we go thanks very much for watching i hope you found my videos useful please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so hit the like button if you like the content of this video would really really appreciate that and thanks very much for watching cheers for now bye